Okay, so we're going to do exam one from spring of 2022. Excuse me as I find my ruler. <laughs> All right, so the first thing uh, we need to do here is, you know, student number. I don't want your name. Um, I hope you didn't give me your name. Um, anyway, so, you know, my student number, of course, is... Um, you know, they really love me at this university. They gave me a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> All right, anyway. So, um, okay, the first one, the first question, we're going to add two vectors. Uh, P is 880. Maybe we'll just make that 880 pounds. And Q is 550 pounds. You may have guessed that I stole this from your book. I did. Uh, using the triangle method, determine the resultant of P and Q. So we want P plus Q equals R. I guess this really should have been P and Q. The resultant must have a magnitude and direction. You will not get credit for doing the component method, but you could use it to check your work. We're gonna, we'll, we'll probably go ahead and use it to check our work just because um, it's good practice. Okay, so here we go. So um, I'm gonna start by drawing a um, you know, coordinate system somewhere. So maybe I'm gonna put it like right here. You know, that's my x direction. And here's, you know, since I know I'm going off to the right, I go this way, right? So I think that that's just gonna make my life a little bit easier. So we'll go 880 pounds. So I'm gonna go on my ruler, what's that, like four, I don't know, a little bit more than four centimeters. Maybe we should do inches. 60 degrees, four inches. Oh, that's gonna be two, let's do two inches. Okay, for 880 at a 60 degree angle. Okay, we're just guessing, we'll go a little bit more than two inches. Okay, now you might go, what? <laughs> that's just based on my ruler. All right, so then 580 then will be, uh, what, like one and a half inches, and that's at a 35 degree angle. Okay, so one and a half inches. Right, it's not a perfect scale, but it just kind of gives me an idea. Okay, so there we go, tip to tail. Okay, so this is 880 pounds, and this is 580 pounds. Okay, um, so that means our resultant, which um, I think I'll use like a blue color for the resultant. That's the thing that we're ultimately looking for. So the resultant goes from the first tail to the last tip. Okay, and this is the angle we're looking for here. Um, Let's see, so now we wanna kinda, of, you know, we wanna label the things that we know. So we know this angle right here is uh, 60 degrees, okay, because that 880 is going off at 60 degrees. That 580 is going off at, looks like 35 degrees, but we don't really have the, um, you know, the coordinate system there, so we need to kinda of draw it in there, like that. So here's a little 35 degrees. Right, and then that's everything that we know. And so now it's time to get started. So we've got a triangle. Um, let me see, maybe I'll, maybe I'll label the three angles on the triangle. Um, you know, so uh, what well, we'll start with, this here is the resultant, right? So the angle across from the resultant, we'll call that one uh, maybe uh, gamma. And then, you know, the angle across from P, call that one alpha maybe. And the angle across from the 580, we'll go ahead and call that beta. Okay, noticing that theta and beta add up to uh, 60 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to use, uh, I don't know what color we're, <laughs> you know, with all of these colors, we're still kind of at a shortage of colors that will really show up on this thing. Let's try a magenta. Let's see if that will actually show up. Okay, let's zoom in here. Okay, so um, if this one right here is 35, that means this is the rest of that 90. So that's going to be 55 degrees. All right. So um, by the same token, if this one down here is 60, this one right here is 60. I guess it's not the same token, but a different token. Uh, that's 60. So if that's 60, this same token is the rest of that 90, so that's 30 degrees. Which means that this gamma right here is uh, 30 plus 55, that's 85 degrees. Okay. Um, all right, so now we're ready for the first part of this, which notice, you know, we're always kind of looking for side angle side. So we've got side angle, oh, not there, side, right? So that's, that's what we want. We want side angle side, and that will help us get the, the opposite side of the triangle, okay? So that's for the law of cosines. Okay, so law of cosines in this case is R squared equals, well, I guess P squared plus uh, Q squared. Now I did A and B on, on the key that I'm going to post, but um, you know, um, you know, just adjust. Uh, two P Q uh, cosine of that angle, of the interior angle. Okay, so R squared equals P squared, 880 pounds. 
squared plus q squared, 580 pounds squared, minus 2 times what, 880 pounds times 580 pounds cosine of 85 degrees. Okay, the cosine of 85 degrees is a very small number. Um, anyway, so if we do the math on this, we get a number that looks like this, 101.9. 101.0.9 pounds. Okay, so that's the magnitude of the resultant. Now we need to figure out this angle over here, theta. Okay, right here. And the way we get theta is we need to get beta. So if we get beta, then I know that beta plus theta equals 60. Okay, so the way to get beta is um, we have to start thinking about law of sines. Usually, I mean, some of you did a law of cosines here to get that, and that's, that's totally fine. But let's go ahead and... Um, Let's do a um, let's do the law of sines because I think that that's a little bit more um, it's more like my cup of tea. <laughs> anyway, so beta in the law of sines has to go with this 580 because it's across from it. Um, so we can do the sine of beta over 580 pounds equals. Now we need another sine of an angle over another side. Okay, and so we want to do an angle and a side that we know. And so that's going to be R and this angle 85 right here, because we know the 85. And we're not worried about the R because we have enough sig figs here that it's not going to create a problem. Oh, dang gummit. That we're not going to, um, that we shouldn't, um, you know, that, that we won't, won't have a rounding error here. Okay. So if we go and we, um, and we work this problem out, so we'll cross multiply and we'll get the sine of beta equals uh, 0 0.57156. And then we'll take the inverse, uh, the arc sine of both sides, and we'll get 34.859 degrees. We should note, of course, that um, there are um, several angles that can give us that this value right here. Okay, but this is a very reasonable value. Okay. Like it could have also been, you know, 180 minus 34.859. Okay. But that would have been, that angle would have been very wide open, way too open for beta as drawn, right? We can see that this is 34 or 35 degrees is very reasonable. Okay. So anyway, so based on the geometry over here, where this is 60 degrees and theta plus beta equals 60. So we can say 60 degrees minus beta equals theta. Okay. So based on that, I can say that theta equals 60 minus 34.859, I get 25.141 degrees. Okay, so then for our final reporting down here, you know, we would, you know, get out our trusty thing, our trusty uh, pencil, and we could write 10, 10 uh, pounds at an angle. Okay, it's of 25.1 degrees. Notice it's important you put the arrowhead here because that shows me that which one of these lines is supposed to be the, um, the vector and which one is the x-axis. A lot of you just drew something like this, and I don't know what that means. Okay, so um, that's no good. Okay, um, you also could have done this, um, and I noticed a lot of people did this, you know, 1.01 uh, .01 kips at an angle of 25.1 degrees. Also fine. Some of you put kilo pounds like this. Um, you would never do that. I didn't take off for that because, I mean, you know, this is your first time playing with these numbers, so I don't really expect you to know that. But um, this means kips times pounds. A kip is a kilo pound. So just leave it at with a little k, and, and, and that'll be fine. Okay, just to check this to make sure that we did it right, um, I'm going to go ahead and do this um, with um, the components. And I guess um, looking up here... I guess maybe I'll get my ruler back out and we'll go ahead and um, I'll do the components in red so we can kind of see what they are. Okay, so here's one component. Here's the X component of the 880. I don't remember if that's P or Q, right? That's the X component. Here's the Y component, like that. Okay, so we've got a right angle right here. We've got a 60 degree angle right here. Okay, so this side right here, this is 880, okay, Sokotoa, Ka, this is the adjacent side to that 60 degrees, so 800, 880 cosine 60 degrees. And this vertical side is going to be 880 sine of 60 degrees. Okay. 
Um, now let's go ahead and do the um, the uh, the other triangle. Okay. Now the easiest way, the easiest triangle is um, this one. So we go this way. That's the horizontal side of that triangle. And here's the vertical side of that triangle. Okay. So we've got a right angle right here, and we've got 580 on the hypotenuse, and we've got an angle of 35 degrees. Okay, we could have done a triangle right here if we wanted to, but then we'd be working with, I guess we'd either have to bring the 35 degrees down here, or I'd be working with this 55 here, right? So, which, I mean, all of that is fine. So this becomes 580 cosine of 35 degrees, and this is 580 times the sine of 35 degrees, okay? So that means our, our final, our total resultant here, resultant equals, so in the x direction, I went this much, plus this much. Okay, so 880 oh, cosine 60 degrees plus 580 cosine 35 degrees. Okay, that's in the I direction. Okay, and then I'm gonna add the J direction, right? So in the J direction, I went up this much, 880 sine of 60 degrees, but then I went down this much, minus 580 sine of 35 degrees, J, okay? So the resultant here equals, okay, so we get, you know, these numbers. I assume you didn't need me to, to hear me narrate that, uh, me punching that into my calculator. <laughs> anyway, so there you go, okay? And you're kind of like, well, that doesn't help me. You're right, well, it does help you, but it's not, uh, it's not what we're going for, right? We're looking for the resultant, you know? So we've got the X component of this triangle, which is right here. If I can draw a straight line. Okay, that's this, 915.11 pounds. And now we've got the Y component, all right, which is right here. Okay, so that's 429.43 pounds. Okay, so now we need to do a little Sokotoa. We've got the opposite side of this um, angle, and we've got the adjacent side of this angle. Okay, so to get that angle, I'll say, well, the tangent of theta equals the opposite, Toa, 429.43 pounds over the adjacent, 915.11 pounds. So we'll take the inverse tangent of both sides, and we can say that theta equals 25.139 degrees. Um, I don't know why I'm using this awful green color, but we'll notice that those kind of match up pretty well. Um, you know, not perfect, but we feel pretty good about it. Um, and then um, let's see. So then if we do the, so now we we need to get R here. And the way we get that is we do the Pythagorean theorem, right? So we'll say r equals the square root of a squared, 915.11 uh, pounds squared, plus b squared, 429.43 pounds squared. And r, in that case, equals 10, 10.9 pounds, right? So if we had done this method and we round to three sig figs, we would get R equals 1.01 kips at an angle of 25.1 degrees. Okay, so in that case, we should feel pretty good, right? So in this case, we are really happy. We've got nice ears. <laughs> All right, although those ears are forced to listen to my, my ridiculous laughter. All right, um, okay, so that's number one. Let's see, how did I grade this? Um, let's see, so for grading this one, we went up here and I said, okay, so the first thing you need to do is law of cosines. So it was plus one for this, plus one for this, and plus two for getting this angle, okay? And then we went down to the law of, of sines and it was pl plus one for the, you know, for basically plus one for each entry into here. And then you got plus one for doing the geometry here. Now, some of you did different uh, law of sines. Um, like you might've did a law of sines to solve for a different angle, and then you used different geometry. So the geometry of getting from your answer to this was worth one point. Okay, I don't need to draw it, write it again. Um, and then just doing the math here was worth one point, okay? And then the last bit was really uh, just reporting your answer. And uh, really it was this thing right here was worth a point, okay? Um, telling me that in the correct way, okay? So a fair number of you did not do that in the in a way that I did um, accepted it. Okay, so that's um, the first problem. Okay, second problem. Whoosh, okay. <laughs> All 
All right, determine the magnitude of the result into the two forces shown. So we're going to add F1 and F2. All right, so the, what we want to do here is we want to, um, we want to turn these into components. So we're going to start with F1. So I'm just going to kind of do a little, you know, we're working on F1 here. Let's see. So F1, if we look at it, we've got a theta Z and we've got a theta X. Now, theta X goes from the X axis to the force, and theta Z goes from the Z axis to the force. That means there has to be a theta Y in here somewhere, so we need an angle going from here to there. Okay, and it looks like that's probably going to be um, in the, like a, a large x-axis, like, I mean, a, a large angle, like an angle larger than 90. And it has to be, right? Because look, notice that this is going off in the negative y direction, right? So this is going to have to be greater than 90. So theta y is greater than 90 degrees. That's something we know right off the bat. Okay, so um, in order to get theta y, we have to use, um, you know, that fancy equation, cosine squared theta x plus cosine squared theta y plus cosine squared theta z equals 1. Okay, so we're just going to plug and chug here. Cosine squared of 45 degrees plus cosine squared of something greater than 90 plus cosine squared of, what, 60? 60 degrees equals 1. Okay, so the cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2, so if we square that, we end up getting 1 half. So it's going to be 1 half plus cosine squared of theta y plus, okay, so the cosine of 60 is a half, so if we square that, we get a fourth equals 1. Okay, so cosine squared of theta y equals 0 0.25 or 1 fourth, so we take the square root of that and we get cosine theta y equals one half, right? So what's the cos what has an angle of one half? Well, it's either gonna be, um, excuse me. Um, well, really, I guess technically it's like positive or negative one half. And in this case, I guess it's the negative one half. So the inverse cosine of negative one half is going to be um, 100 and, 120 degrees. Okay, so theta y equals 120 degrees. You may have gotten 60. Uh, like if you just put in the positive one half, you'll end up with um, you'll end up getting sixty out of the calculator, um, and then you just have to make you have to subtract that from one eighty to get that uh, one twenty. I think technically that's incorrect, um, but it will give you the right answer. Okay, so then um, so this is directional cosines now because we have all three of our of our angles, so we can just say okay, well f one then equals. Um, let's see, you know what. I'm going to do this like over here and give myself a little bit of space. Uh, how am I going to do this? It's fine. I'll just do it right here. Okay. Um, F1 equals, okay, the magnitude of the vector is 70 pounds. Okay. And then I'm going to do cosine of theta x in the i plus cosine of theta y in the j plus cosine of theta z in the k. Okay. Now, um, you could have, um, I'll mention this in a second, but so you also could have done this if you wanted to, like if you didn't want to work with 120, you could have said theta y equals 60. I mean, that would have been technically incorrect. But then what you could have done is down here for this term, you could have done minus cosine theta y j like that. And so you would have just been making a mental note that this is a negative sign and taking care of it yourself. Um, you could do that. Um, in which case, all of this would be the same, right? You'd have 70 pounds cosine theta x um, i. Whoops, that's not what I wanted right there. Um, plus cosine theta z in the k. Okay, you could have done that if you wanted to. Um, I did not do that. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug the, the numbers in here. Oh, right, right. Well, so I'll show you how it would come out different. Okay, let me just, you know, erase all of these and we'll put, we'll put values in here. Um, come on. Sorry, this thing likes to freeze. Um, so this is going to be a 60. Okay, now if you prefer, you know, I would think that this would be a better option would be to do plus 120. It's kind of up to you though. Okay, I have in my life done both of these. Okay, let's see like that and like that. Okay, and just because um, I think it's going to be easy on me, I mean, you'll get the same answer either way, but I'm going to go ahead and put F1 over here. 
So it's going to be, um, let's see here, 49.497 pounds in the I, uh, minus, sorry, minus 35 pounds in the J, plus 35 pounds in the K. Okay, so that's F1. Okay, we could box that if we wanted to. It's never a bad policy. It helps you find the important things later. Okay, so now that we'll do F2. F2. Okay, I guess, did I? I forgot this little arrow right here, didn't I? Okay, so let's go look at F2. F2 is a little bit annoying. All right, I'm actually going to do some of its work over here because I find that to be a little bit easier. Okay, so we're going to start by noting this is a right triangle right here. Okay, and I've got this angle right here, 50 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this vertical component right here by noting that that's gonna be 60 pounds, and notice that's the opposite side, so that's gonna be times the sine of 50 degrees. Okay, this one right here, this is gonna be 50 pounds, or 50, uh, sorry, <laughs> 60 pounds, 60 pounds times the cosine of 50 degrees, okay? Now, if I'm paying attention, I'll note that this is the vertical component of F2. So this is F2 in the Z direction, okay? This one right here is, um, that's F2, and it is not in the X or the Y direction, so it's kind of in the X, Y plane, okay? So what we need to do from that then, and I'll switch to blue here, is I wanna like get the component in the Y direction, which is right here and the component in the x direction, which is right here, okay? So to get those, I note that this is a right angle right here. Okay, this is a right angle, okay? Because this is F, what, FZ in the x direction, and this is FZ in the y direction. So the y and the z components are at right angles, okay? So I'm gonna take this, uh, this is like my hypotenuse right here, okay? And I'm going to say, well, FZY equals that hypotenuse, 60 pounds, cosine of 50, okay? Now, I need to use this angle right here, 30 degrees, okay? So this is the adjacent side, so that'll be uh, cosine of 30, Okay? And now for the x component, now we notice this has a negative sign on it. Um, so what we'll do here is I'm going to say negative. Now I'm still going to use that hypotenuse, 60 pounds, cosine of 50 degrees. Okay, and then, well, here's the opposite side right here. So we're going to use the um, sine of 30 degrees. Okay, and that's how we get F2z. Uh, Okay, so let's see, let's go back over here. And uh, so I'm just gonna basically take these three values right here and plug them in. Actually, before we go over there, let's just, let's go ahead and calculate these values. So F uh, two in the Z direction is 45.963 pounds. Um, F Z in the X direction is negative uh, 19.283. I've not double checked these answers yet, so I, I suppose I'm going to have to do that. Um, and then FZ in the Y equals um, 38. Point, nope, sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, 33. 33.400 pounds. Okay, I just checked them, and it looks like those numbers are correct, unless I made the same error twice. All right, so we're going to take all of those things. To get, we're going to basically going to combine all of these together, okay, I, J, and K, and I'll put them right down here under this. Okay, um, let's do this. Let's get rid of that. Let's say um, F1 equals this, and F2 equals, um, let's see here, negative 19 point. 283 pounds in the I plus 
33.400 pounds in the J. Um, plus 45.963 pounds in the K. Okay, so that's one solution, or one part of it, and this, of course, is another part. Okay, I, I guess I'm just trying to make my boxes the same around both of them. Okay, so the resultant would be if we add these two together. Okay, so um, let's see, so this first one's going to be about 30, right? 30.214 pounds in the I, uh, minus 1.60 uh, oh, I guess we have one more pounds in the J plus 80.963 in the K. 963 pounds in the K. Okay, we'll notice that uh, both, of these, both of these are pulling up, upwards. Okay, so if we go look at our picture, you notice that both of these are going up. Uh, it's going up right here. It's going up right here. So these two are working together. And that's why we get the really large force in the uh, y in the in, in the in the z direction. Okay, we'll notice that the y components of these things. Well, um, you know this one's going negative y, and this one's going uh, positive y right here. Okay, and they're almost completely canceling each other out. And in the x direction, this one's going positive x. Okay, and this one's going negative x, so they're also working against each other. Okay, so that's why we primarily get the z direction, is because in the x and the y direction, they're canceling each other out to some degree. Okay, so that's technically, this is the answer, except um, I think what I specifically asked for is I said, you know, what is the um, magnitude of the resultant? Okay, so to get that magnitude, magnitude, we would do the Pythagorean theorem in 3D, which looks like this, uh, 30.214 pounds squared plus 1.600 pounds squared plus 80.963 pounds squared. And if you get used to, if you do this a lot and you start paying attention, you know we're probably going to get an, an answer that's close to about 90 here. Um, and, uh, you know, it was even smaller than I thought, uh, 86.432 pounds. Okay, so there you go. That's the magnitude. Okay, notice you also could have written this like this as like that, okay? So we come down here to the resultant down here. For some reason, I put the arrow. I'm muted now, okay. So that, yeah, so I should have, I should have not included that arrow there. Um, so really, I guess the, the correct way to do that would be to, oh, he put this little thing here. He wanted the magnitude. So we're going to do this, and we'll round to three like that, okay? So that's the answer to number two. All right, let's see here. Number three, okay. I only, oh, wait, how am I gonna grade this one? Um, let's see, I haven't started grading this one yet. So probably what we're gonna do is um, getting this angle is gonna be worth two points. And then over here, it's really, you know, kind of like a one, two, three, four, five, Six and of course I'll have to stare through there and to see, you know, what errors you made and how much they, you know, cascaded over, right? And then just getting this final answer from that, um, you know, getting here is worth another two, right? So obviously, you know, if you made a mistake up here on one of these, um, you know, as long as you know, basically the two is to go from your answer here to your answer here, right? So. Um, Okay, so that's pretty much, that's the 10 points on that one. Um, okay, so let's go down here. All right, if the tension T in cable DE is 82 pounds, determine the moment of T applied at D around point A. Okay, so applied at D. You know what, I've got this nice uh, magenta. So I'm going to go ahead and use it because it's really going to stand out nice. Okay, so here we go. Actually, let's, let's do the magenta for the R. Okay, so the tension here... Applied at D, it looks like this. All right, so that's 82 pounds. Okay, and then I've got this thing right here, R, which is going from A, which is somewhere like right there, straight out here. Now, a quick look at this showed me that some of y'all did some really nice drawings of this. Okay, um, but what we want to know for R 
and maybe I'll maybe I'll stick with the magenta for this. I just need to know how far R is in all of these different directions, right? Um, so let's see. So R in the X direction is probably the most annoying one to look at and try to figure out. Um, but it looks like R is going from A out to here. Okay. So in the X direction, R equals, it looks like, um, four feet in the X direction. Okay. And then the Y direction, well, let's see, we're going to try to be parallel here. Hmm. Oh no, it only went three feet, didn't it? Dang it. <laughs> All right. I kept looking at that thinking, yeah, that's pretty, pretty weird. All right. So it's actually stopping. Let's see if we can draw a line parallel to Y here. Stopping about right here. Okay, so here's R. So R is going, it looks like this distance right here, three feet here. Okay. And then it's going to go um, along this way. That's two feet, which we can tell from right there. And um, it doesn't go up or down. So, and both of those are positive. Two feet in the, what do we call that? The, the J, and then zero in the K, okay? Now, if you're thinking to yourself, my God, how am I supposed to do that? How am I to figure that out? You know, blah, blah. If you made this error, you know, it's, it's just one point, probably. I, again, I, have, <laughs> I haven't graded this, so I have, to, uh, I have to put all that together, right? Um, anyway, so that's R, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and erase those lines. Um, because we got to do F as well, right? And F is, um, so let's do F. Okay, so that's R. And for F, like, we have a lot of the same, almost the exact same concerns. We're saying it's going from where to where. Okay, so let's see. So here's F. And F is going to be 82 pounds times. Now we're going to have an I, J, K. I, J, and a K. Boom, boom. Um, and those are supposed to have arrows on the top of them. Okay, so let's see here. In the X direction, it goes from three feet out here to four feet out here. Okay, so this is, so it's going from three feet out right here till it's four feet out there, right? So that's gonna be a one foot, right? And in the J direction, it's going from right here, which is two feet out, to right here, which is zero feet out. So it's going negative two feet. Okay, and then right here, in the K direction, up and down, what's going from zero feet up to uh, two feet based on this right here. So we get a positive two feet. Okay. So, um, let's see. So based on that, then, we need to get what, you know, what goes on the bottom of this fraction, which is one squared plus two squared. So we'll do the, the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem there. And I'll just kind of do it on the side over here. So what goes on the bottom there is a one foot squared plus two foot squared, technically a negative two, but we're not worried about that, plus two foot squared, square root of that. So that's one plus four plus four, that's nine, so that's gonna be three. So we're gonna get a three on the bottom here, three feet, three feet, three feet. Okay, so these are the things that we're gonna take the cross product about. Uh, you know, those, those are the things we're gonna take the cross product of. Okay, so um, now, silly me, I should have made this 81 pounds because that would have made life a whole heck of a lot easier. Um, yeah, I apologize for that. Okay, so let's go down here and let's go ahead and uh, figure these things out. Okay, so, um, oh, well, I guess I shouldn't call that F, should I? I should have called that tension T because that's the way it was defined in the problem. So this should be a capital T. So we'll, you know, put that as a capital T. All right, so let's go over here, and we'll say, uh, well, let's go down here where we have some space. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, um, the moment of T around A equals R cross T 
equals. Okay, now I'm going to have I, J, K. And then I'm going to copy that again, right? I and J. Okay, the R's are uh, 3 feet, 2 feet, 0. 3 feet, 2 feet. Okay, so we draw a line here because that's the end of our matrix. Okay, now for the tensions, um, I guess I should probably... You know, I'm going to just kind of put this number down there, this number down there, and this number down here. So I'm just going to distribute that 82. Okay, so um, so we're going to end up with uh, 27.333 pounds and negative 54.667 pounds and 54.667 pounds. Okay, so then 27.333 pounds and negative 54.667 pounds. Okay, boom. Okay, so now we just gotta do, you know, a lot of math here. Kind of annoying. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go ahead and let's just, um, let's do, I guess, blue for the things that will not, that'll be, so this is a forward diagonal, so it's gonna have a positive number. So it'll be uh, 109 point, I guess I need MTA, MTA. So it's 109.33. Um, and usually we write that as uh, foot pounds, okay, like that. And then we'll put a little I on there. Okay, this J is a giant big fat zero. We love those. Okay, and then we got this, which is a negative number minus three times one fifty, three times fifty four point six six six, and we're gonna get one hundred and sixty four uh, foot pounds. Okay, and that's got a K on it. Okay, now we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna start doing the negative ones. So this is gonna be a negative minus two times twenty seven point three three. So that's minus fifty four point three 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 pounds. Um. I'm sorry, six, six, six. Sorry, that's that's not a devil thing, I, I promise. Uh, six, 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 and that's foot pounds. Um, and then we're gonna do this one, which is a big fat zero, we love those. And then minus three of these. So minus one, uh, what's three times 54 point blah, 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 is minus 164 foot pounds, and that's in the J direction. Okay, so now we need to collect like terms. Um, oh, I forgot which one, what was this one? That is my negative, that's my K, so this has a K. Okay, so these two need to go together. Okay, so M T A equals, um, in the I direction, 109.33 foot pounds, um, minus 164 foot pounds in the J. And then minus, that's going to be 200 and something. 218, 218.67 foot pounds in the uh, K direction. In fact, that should have been a 7, shouldn't it have? Um, okay, and that is your answer. Okay. Now, it's tempting in this case, um, well, let's, let's go ahead and finish the problem and then I'll say something real quick. So this is going to be uh, 109 in the I, minus 164 in the J, minus 219 in the K, and this is units of foot-pounds, okay? Or you could have done, you know, however you wanted to do it. Okay, so it's tempting in this case. Um, you could do a three-dimensional, like, you could do, you could solve for the moment here. I mean, not the moment, the magnitude of this by doing uh, 109.33 foot-pounds squared plus 164 foot-pounds squared plus 218, 218.67 foot-pounds squared. So you could have done the magnitude here. Um, this is not, I, I don't usually see this for moments, but you could have done this. I don't, I don't know what the answer is, um, and I don't really have my calculator. I'm using my phone right now. So I'm just going to leave it like that. But you could have done that. Um, you know, you would have gotten an answer, you know, probably pushing 300. Um, the, key, the problem with that, I think, sometimes is that, um, you know, if you're doing a resultant force, 
a lot of times it's, it's fairly straightforward to picture what the magnitude of that resultant force is. This, like if you were to do this, this would be the magnitude of the moment due to that force around some axis that is hard to visualize. Um, you know, so, I mean, the best way to do it would be to kind of break these things down into like unit, uh, unit uh, vectors. And maybe not unit vectors is the wrong word, but um, some kind of way to visualize what these things are. So it's, you know, mostly around the k-axis. It's just, I, I don't know, it's hard to kind of visualize what this means. Um, it's just hard to visualize what this, this means. Okay, I have to think about how to explain that better. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, anyway, uh, usually you don't go for the, for the magnitude of the moment. There's no reason you can't, though. And it's not a meaningless thing. It's just not really done very often. Okay, so um, anyway, um, let's see. Um, how will I grade this? Basically, it's all going to come down to this thing right here. Um, you know, you basically are hunting for values here, right? So, um, let's see, I've done this before. So, I think um, there's going to be four points here going from this down to this, right? Now, whatever you happen to have up here. And then there'll be six points here, one for each, uh, basically, location here. Okay, so you should be able to get those values. Okay, so that's going to be the 10 points. All right. Um, and I haven't figured out exactly how I'll align these four points. Maybe it'll be like plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, or something along those lines. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, with just like other random points being lost for little algebraic errors or whatever. Okay. So anyway, um, let's go down here to this one. Okay. I've already graded this one. Uh, this one um, y'all did pretty well on, which is pretty cool. Um, I always like when that happened. One thing, though, that I will comment on before I begin here is this is a mass. All of our equations are for forces. We can't use masses. Right? You need to do weight equals mass times gravity. So, you know, 40 kilograms times 9.81, this is a weight of 392.4 newtons. Okay? Um, so that, in my grading, was worth two points. Okay? Um, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't mean for that to be a trick, um, but, you know, half of you missed it, probably. Um, anyway. Um, okay, so what we're going to do here, um, we need to solve this. We need to determine the tensions in cables B and D. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, and a lot of you skipped this step, um, but it makes things a lot easier. It's a free body diagram. I'm going to do a free body diagram of that little ring right here. This little ring right here, the ring at A. Okay, and so it's just got a bunch of, uh, you know, ropes coming off of it. Here's a rope right here, pulling off with a tension. I'll call that tension in B. Yeah, it's got a little angle there of 30 degrees. Okay, I'm going to have an angle D going this way, or a tension going this way, tension in D. And then I'm going to have a force going downwards, which is that weight there. Okay, uh, which is 300. Well, I'm just going to, yeah, weight. Okay, and that's my free body diagram. Okay. So once we've got that, now we notice in this problem there's no moments uh, because everything is going right through the center of that ring. So I can say, okay, well, the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. Okay, well, let's see here. That means um, here we've got an x component of TB. Uh, well, we went, a little, we went a little too far there, didn't we? Okay, so we'll go like this. And a y component of TB. Okay, so this is going to be TB cosine of 30. This is going to be TB sine of 30. Okay, so we'll say, uh, so in the x direction, we only have two forces, and that's this one and this one. So we'll say, well, TB cosine 30 degrees minus TD equals zero. And now we need to do the y direction. Some of the forces in the y direction equals zero. And we've only got two forces in the y direction. We've got weight and we've got the vertical here. So we've got TB sine of 30 degrees minus the weight equals zero. Okay, so the one that we want to solve in this case is this one because it only has one unknown because we know that weight. 
Okay, so we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get to work on that. And so we'll say, well, TB, what's the sine of 30? The sine of 30, that's a half, one half. Okay, minus the weight, which is 392.4 newtons equals zero. So TB equals uh, 784.8 newtons. Okay, now we'll take that and we'll plug it back in over here. And we'll get, uh, let's see here, um, dim, 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 um, <laughs> uh, 784.8 newtons times the cosine of 30. Well, that's root 3 over 2. Minus TD equals 0. And so if we solve that, we'll get TD equals uh, 679.66 newtons. I wonder if that was actually 66 and not 67. I guess it doesn't matter because we're going to round all that away, aren't we? Okay, so then we'll come down here to the answers, and we'll say that this one is 785 newtons, and this one is 680 newtons. Okay? Um, and I put this little sign here to remind you guys to go back and check the whole test. I'm not sure that you all did, but, you know, that was the hope. Okay? So up here, um, how did we grade this one? Well, there were two points here, and then um, these things boiled down to... One here, one here, one there for the cosine, and then one here, one here, and one here. So basically six points were, can you set up the questions? Can you set up these equations? Okay. And then the last two basically is, you know, can you get to these two answers right here? So plus one, plus one. Okay. And that's it. So that's the whole test. And, uh, you know, so we're at 45 minutes. Hopefully that was helpful. And uh, there's a lot of black space out there. Anyway, um, I hope this helped. And uh, take it easy and uh, take care of yourselves. Okay, bye.